Amen. Amen. This is the true worshiper. Praise the Lord. First and foremost, I want to give thanks to my beloved wife. She is a praying woman. I tell you, it's a lot that I do and have. I would not have and would not be able to do if it wasn't for my wife. She prays for the president. Whoever's president, she'll pray for them and their families without ceasing. If they're in presidency for four years or eight years, every day, every night, she's praying for that president and their family. She prays for our grandson's school and all his classmates and teachers. She prays for the homeless. This is something she does every day and every night. So I am honored. She prays for the family. She prays for um, family that's on my side of the family who she hasn't met. She'll pray for these people every day and every night as though she knows them personally. And she prays for um, all of our children every day whether the children are disrespectful whether the children call or say hi or not does it matter she's praying for them every day and every night so i wanted to say that before i begin this message this message is what is going on in the united states it has to do with that. Why is there so much hatred um, towards one another? Why is there so much prejudice and racism, murder, and all types of evil? Listen, everyone is saying that we're in the, the last days. The world is ending. But yet, people that are confessing this out of their mouth... Um, there's no change. The people that can have conversations at work with their fellow employees about the world ending, they still are full of hatred towards one another, towards people in their immediate family they have no love for. And um, if God was to ask them why, they wouldn't be able to give God a legitimate answer. All they could probably say was, I don't know, or something stupid like, I asked to borrow $20 and they wouldn't give it to me. And you have that reason to hate that person in your family. This is what I'm saying, you know, this pandemic, this virus, all this stuff that's going on, millions of people have lost their lives to this disease, and no one, you know, you can probably count on your hand how many people are, are loving one another are changing their ways. But is there's a reason why there's racism, prejudice, and hatred in families, why there's hatred outside of families where whites don't like blacks, blacks don't like whites, whites don't like Mexicans, Mexicans don't like whites, and all of this stuff, all this hatred. Why is this going on? And I want to talk to you about that because everything that you're seeing that the police are doing, shooting a man in his back seven times, um, an unarmed man shooting him in his back seven times, uh, police killing people that are unarmed, um, people killing people, men killing women, um, children killing their parents. I want you to know all these things that I just mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. These are symptoms of a bigger problem, of a deep-rooted problem that has been in man for a long time. When I say man, I'm talking about the human race. And um, what is causing all of this hatred and wars and murder... Um, is written in the Bible and it tells us in Mark chapter 7 starting at the 21st verse it reads for from within out of the heart of man comes evil thoughts 
sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Did you hear that? All of these things comes from our hearts. We need to get our hearts right with God first. And this has been going on since the beginning. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, when they disobeyed God, and when sin came in, when it opened the door and let the devil and his character come inside of human beings. And Jesus would, would, would be preaching and teaching and there would be a crowd of Pharisees, other religious folks, and Jesus would tell them the reason you don't understand my words of love is because you are like your father, the devil, who was a murderer from the beginning. In Genesis 6, starting at the fifth verse, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God seen that man's heart was evil continually. Like a 24 hour town in Las Vegas, the lights stay on 24 hours. They don't shut off. But when God looked at human beings on the earth, he looked at their hearts and he says, look at this. Their hearts are full of evil, even their thoughts. This is why we have wars and hatreds towards other races. It's because our hearts are evil. All of this mess is coming from the heart. And we need to get our hearts right before the coming of the Lord. It's written in, in Jeremiah 17. Starting at the ninth verse. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick or wicked. Who can understand it? The Lord searched the heart and he tests the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of of his deeds. Mm, mm, mm. We have a heart problem. But let me tell you how to solve that heart problem. When you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're out here listening right now. You want to make a change. Just ask God to forgive you. Ask him to come into your life. Tell him that you want to be changed. Ask him to forgive you for everything you have thought and have done that's wicked and evil. And in Ezekiel chapter 36, starting at the 26th verse, it reads, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Matthew 5, starting at the 8th verse says, For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Amen. Amen. So, that's why we have so much evil and hatred and wickedness and theft. When people are invading your homes, home invasions, wars, while we have troops in Afghanistan and, 
And we're on the verge of going to war with Russia and China. Why? Because of man's heart. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10, starting at the 22nd verse, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. This verse can happen right now if you can get on your knees and pray and say, God, forgive me. If you have a local church in your community that you want to join and be baptized and learn the Bible, Read God's word and his laws that govern your life. Amen. So once you give your life to the Lord, guard your heart. Though we have a new heart, we are still living in a fallen world. And in a body of flesh, we will struggle with the sins that easily entangles us. We are commanded to guard our hearts and not be bound by the snares of sin and evil doing. It isn't that we can lose our salvation, but we can't grow in holiness unless we guard our heart and live in obedience. This is called progressing in sanctification. So you have to guard your heart. You don't let someone come to you and say, hey, you know, let's go pull this lick, man. They got like 50000 They got like $100,000 over here, man. They only got one security guard. Let's go pull this lick. No, guard your heart. I don't care how much you need money. Guard your heart. Because we are living in the last days. We have been living in the last days. The last days are the days when Jesus was resurrected and waiting on his return. And right there in the middle are the last days. Amen. So what you want to do, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 tells us, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Luke chapter 6, verse 45 reads, The good person out of the good treasures of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasures produces evil out of his heart. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Amen. Something else I want to share with you. I want to share something else with you here. Um, and then we're going to just end in prayer. How about that? Now, written in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, starting at the third verse. It's titled, Godliness in the Last Days. And Paul is warning, the Apostle Paul is warning um, Timothy, another man of God. He's doing what I'm doing with you that are watching. He says, there would be terrible times in the last days. Why? Because of our hearts. If our hearts are not right, if our hearts are full of evil, we're going to have terrible times in these last days. And people, everybody don't want to give their life to Jesus. And for those that do, I understand that those that don't are messing it up for everybody. But that's okay. They're not messing it up for you, believer. They're not messing it up for you. There will be terrible times in the last days. Like I said, these are symptoms. All this stuff, murder and all that stuff, those are symptoms of what's really going on. And what I told you, what's really going on is the heart. That's where all this stuff is coming from. 
People will be selfish. They will be lovers of themselves. They will be materialistic, lovers of money. They will be boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous. You see, we're in the last days because what I've just read to you, all this stuff is going on outside of your family and inside of your family, right up under the same roof that you live in, unforgiveness, no love, slanderous, unholy, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, abusive, proud, boastful. They have no self-control, brutal, brutal, that you can shoot another human being seven times in his back when you supposed to represent law and order. Protecting people. Who are you protecting? By shooting a man seven times in his back. Right in front of his small children. The reason why this police officer did that is because of what's in his heart. What else is going on in these last days? There are not lovers of the good. People don't love the good. They love what's bad. They love evil. People have been, are, are becoming treacherous. They are tr very treacherous. You can't trust them. Your own son. No, watch you cash your check and come in the house. Put your money up and take a nap. He's so treacherous, he go in there and cut your throat and take your money. And people are rash. They speak without thinking. They're conceited. They're lovers of pleasure rather than being lovers of God. So that's all I wanted to share with you. So you can know what's going on in the world. And what's going on with human beings? Why people are so hateful? Why people are so hateful and ungrateful? Why we have wars? Why are men, children being molested, women being raped and murdered? Parents killing their children? Because of the heart. Because of what's in the heart. And the only thing that's going to stop this and change this, number one, if these people will stop. And think and realize that they have a heart problem. And God will change your heart. If you let him into your life, read his word, obey his commandments, live the way he's telling you to live. We can solve a whole lot of this, these angers, issues and hatreds and prejudice and racism. And that goes, that goes for all races. One race can't do this. One race can't. Um, give their life to God. All races, all human beings, mankind needs to change. But this is why we who believe are saying, please, Jesus, come on right now and take us. It's written in Job chapter 14, verse 14. Once a man dies, can he live again? Once a human being dies, can they live again? And the answer to that is yes. Jesus says that he has prepared a place for us in heaven and that we will live eternally with him. And you got two places where you're going to spend the rest of your life because once you come out of this body, see, this is just flesh that's holding you inside. But once you die, you're going to spend eternity and forever in paradise with the Lord Jesus Christ or in hell with Satan and his demons. So I advise you right now, stop. If you realize that you're full of hate, that's a symptom and a sign that your heart is not right. Get on your knees and ask God to forgive you and stop all this foolishness and ask him to come into your life. The word says that he will give you a new heart. He'll renew your mind. He, he will wash you and cleanse you. Amen. God bless you. This is the true worshiper. I'll see you again next time.